So now I'm going to take a concentricity measurement. I have on my print the requirement that says the ID has to be concentric to the OD at a certain height or depth down in there. Um, so I'm going to be able to do that with the microform gauge and I will show you that now. I'm going to reorient the probe so that I'm in an ID configuration. So I'm going to first go down inside the bore and I'm going to go down, um, there's a set of uh, holes inside so I'm going to be halfway in between there and get it on scale so I can see that looking here that I'm on scale and again you want to confirm that you are on scale and it hasn't dropped off otherwise you won't get a good measurement. So I'm going to take, I'm going to select concentricity here. There are two different types of concentricity. In this case I'm going to do an in-plane concentricity which is in the same plane as the work table ID and OD all at the same height. So I'm going to select next and that sets me in that in-plane concentricity. The instructions here tell me I have to input information over here as to what the part is. So I'm going to use the scale on the side here and I'm at 8 inches. And I can put in a part name so I'm going to just say a test sample and for comments I'm going to say upper part of shaft and I'm going to put in my initials. Uh, these are certainly uh, anything you want to put in there that's valuable to you uh, to see later when you pull this, these results up. I'm going to say change it from OD to ID to orient the, this particular um, trace and I'm going to hit apply. Once I hit apply and then I have options here and the instructions tell me I can use the motor or manually spin. So I'm going to use the motor and it's going to take basically one revolution of the ID it's going to give me the TIR of that position, the roundness of that position and that's going to be my datum point and then I'll move to the OD and compare that. So I've got a roundness of 42.6 millionths on the ID so it tells me now that I can either retake that measurement if there's something that I suspect is not accurate uh, or I want to get confirmation two or three times to make sure that I've got repeatability there. Once I'm satisfied with it I can say next and it tells me to move the probe to the other surface that I want to measure and I'm going to orient the probe the other way, come to the outside, drop down in to the same height, and again I can look here and eyeball it, or I can look here, I know I was at 8 inches, and come in, when I get on scale here I'll see that. Again, just confirm that you're on scale, you cannot make any adjustments for tilt and center because that throws off your center point of the first one. Now I also need to put in the user inputs here. So I'm going to say the same thing, but I'm going to change it from ID to OD. I'm going to apply that and then use the motor. So this is doing the same thing as it did on the ID. It's going to take a roundness measurement of the OD. And what it's going to then do is compare the center points of the first, the ID measurement or trace and the OD and it's going to give me two plots here, uh, the black being uh, reference the, the first circle um, and what we call the datum and then the blue being the second surface relative to that and I have a concentricity of four tenths, forty millionths. And again I can print that or save that. I've got a whole list of other information here. It records the date and time. It has the part name that I put in, uh, the type of analysis, least squared, Gaussian, 50 UPR is a setting, has the information about surface 1 and surface 2, and then concentricity, TIR, vector direction, circular runout, and the high point, and that all prints out in your results.